Well, is this little RX 580 worth it for any more than 1080p gaming in 2020? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Uh, the RX 580, according to Steam, is one of the most used AMD graphics cards for gaming. So in the Heaven benchmark here, uh, normal 1080p, which again, according to Steam, is one of the most popular resolutions to play in. Uh, but using the ultra quality, the RX 580 got an average FPS of 85 with a max FPS of 158.3 and a minimum FPS of 33.8. But then when we go to triple screens in that same benchmark, we take a massive hit down to 29.9 average frames per second with a minimum of 13.8 FPS and a maximum of 59.5. So clearly here in triple screen gaming, the RX 580 is having quite a bit of an issue here. And then going over to Superposition to do some VR benchmarks. Putting it onto VR Maximum, we got an average FPS of 51, maximum of 63.8, and a minimum of 41.25, which is okay for normal gaming. However, in VR, you really need to be matching your VR hertz refresh rate. Otherwise, you do tend to get a little bit motion sick. And just out of curiosity, I decided to load up VR Future to really load up the RX 580. And we got an average of 15.46 FPS, maximum of 19.15, and minimum of 10.85. And that's all a simulation on HTC Vive Pro with 2016 by 2240 resolution per eye. But of course, that is just all synthetic type benchmarking, not in actual games. So I decided to load up Assetto Corsa Competizione on the triple screens. And I got an average FPS of 22.7, minimum of 20, and maximum of 26, which in this game is just very unplayable. And trying the game in VR was not really much better. In VR, we got 23.708, average FPS, minimum of 7, and a maximum of 30 FPS here. But in the RX 580's defense, this game isn't uh, very well optimized. And then switching over to Project Cars 2, I got an average of 51.863, minimum of 32 FPS, and maximum of 65 FPS on the triple screens. But then going over to VR, we got an average of 39.983, a minimum of 19, and a maximum of 41 FPS. And for the most part, I would kind of say in this game, the RX 580 was kind of playable, but maybe only just. And now switching over to F1 2019 on the built-in benchmarking software in the game, I had everything on ultra high quality on the triple screens and as you could kind of expect it didn't do well we got an average of 26 frames per second minimum of 22 and a maximum of 30 frames per second but that is on the ultra high quality settings when turning the game down to high settings all of a sudden things got a little bit more playable and I got an average FPS of 46, a minimum FPS of 41 and a maximum FPS of 55. So I have actually had a lot of experience with 
the RX 580s. I've had two of them in both my computers. Uh, the simulator PC, which is this model here, which I just showed you. Uh, this one from Gigabyte. And also I had a Asus Strix big triple fanned thing in my main PC, uh, which does a little bit of mainly 1080p gaming and a little bit of VR. However, both these PCs are being upgraded now. This PC, the RX 580, is just nowhere near powerful enough to do triple screen and VR gaming. And that's pretty much all I do on here. Triple screen and VR. And on the other PC, while the RX 580 8GB was fine for the 1080p gaming for the most part on most games, I do use that PC for VR a bit. And I think if you're planning on VR, despite the fact that RX 580s are VR ready, VR premium, VR premium ready, <laughs> just because it says that doesn't mean it's going to perform amazing. And while the RX 580 is good in 1080p, I'm afraid it's not something I would recommend for anyone to buy for VR. Or triple screens for that matter. Even the 8 gig most powerful RX 580s out there, I just wouldn't do it. I've tried it, I've overclocked them, I've done all that stuff, and it's just 1080p only. And it'll play most games at an okay frame rate. But what GPU would I recommend for entry level VR slash triple screen gaming, I would probably recommend this one. The NVIDIA 1660 Super. Um, as a price comparison, at least in Australia, I don't know how much they are in the other parts of the world, but in Australia, the RX 580 is around about 250 to $300 somewhere. Whereas the 1660 Super is around about $100 more than that, again, in AUD. This particular model, I spent 430-ish dollars for memory. But if you're a heavy user like I am and like this setup here that wants to do racing games and things like that, and a few games like Assetto Corsa Competizione, for example, that's quite hard on the GPU, well then I would possibly say the 1660 Super is not enough. Again, I would probably step up another hundred ish dollars, a little bit more over a hundred dollars, and go for this Radeon RX 5700, which I just bought. Uh, these are retailing here in Australia for around about 550 Australian dollars. But how much difference is there between this and this for effectively double the price. Can you even see that in screen now? I say that because I don't have a flippy screen to see myself. Well, I've done some benchmarking on the RX 5700 against the RX 580 to tell just how much an improvement you'll get. And for that video, you'll have to like and subscribe because that is coming out in probably my next video. So yeah, um, subscribe for that. Or it might be out already by the time you're watching this video. So thanks for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video.